Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and you're the best time I've ever had, Margo. <laughs> Joining me is my <laughs> podcasting sister from another mister. Wow. And the co-host of Dorking Out, Margo D. Hello, friend. Hello, my name is Juan. Let's hang out. <laughs> I love Juan in this movie. I do, too. You mean my little mule, Pepe. <laughs> we are dorking out about 1984's Romancing the Stone. I watched this movie so much back in the day. It is written by Diane Thomas. Did you read about her when you were doing yes. your, when you were doing your dorking out stuff? It has a sad ending, but I love the beginning, which is that she was working as a waitress and wrote this screenplay and sent it to an agent and Michael Douglas read it and super loved it. And they gave her a pretty hefty sum, apparently, for a first time yeah, screenplay. Yeah, a million. Which I think is really, really awesome. Because he was like, I don't, I read an interview with him where he said, like, I don't care that it's her first screenplay. It was really, really good. And you pay when something's really good, basically. And I was like, that's Aww. rad. But then I also read that he bought her a fancy car to thank her. Did you read this part? <gasps> Yes. Yeah. So he bought her a Porsche to, you know, thank her. And um, later th uh, she was killed in that car, like a car crash. Drunk driving, I believe. Like her boyfriend was driving because they had all been he out. He was supposed to be sober, I think. Of like It was like her and her sister, I think. Yeah. It was multiple people. But, yeah, it's a super, super sad story. She was only 39. Yeah, she was so young. And she yeah. she had written this movie. It was a huge hit. She was working on Always for Steven Spielberg. Right. And she did not work on Jewel of the Nile, which <laughs> I think right. it, it, well, it didn't get shows. <laughs> but right. What a, that, it's a sad story. But it's a, it's a really good movie. It's directed by Robert Zemeckis, which I totally forgot. Until I started the movie and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't even realize that. And it stars Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner, Danny DeVito. Um, I don't need to list all these people. Those are the main people. Oh, and Holland Taylor. National oh treasure. Oh, God. Holland Taylor. We should say also Mar Mary Ellen Trainer plays her sister. She was also a writer on the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Good call. Good call. And then um, and go ahead. Alfonso Arau, he plays Juan. He directed Like Water for Chocolate. <gasps> Shut and that's up. The book. He directed that, and his wife, he was married to Laura Esquivel, that was who wrote the original novel and the screenplay. They were married at the time. I did not know that. He's so yeah, great in this I, movie, too. He's hilarious in this movie. I, I love the cast of this movie so much. I, I love... Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner together. I think they have such amazing chemistry. And I think when you get Danny DeVito in there, like they all bounce, like they're not even in like a yeah. ton of scenes together, but like the way they interact with each other, I really like it. And I just, I forgot how Danny DeVito is funny as shit in this movie. He's so yeah. good. I love him. I love the way he talks to his cousin, Ira. <laughs> Ira. Ira, you're an embarrassment to the family, and you always have been, and you're the luckiest son of a bitch. She's here. <laughs> I, just, I love it so much. Did you see this movie in the theater? No. I think I was trying to remember when I first saw it, and I think it was on HBO. Same. And I know I recorded it. We've had, we've had this conversation before. Like, you have a VHS with a few movies mm -hmm. on it. And I had, like, Romancing the Stone, I think, and Real Genius together that sounds right which was yeah which, and i would play them over and over again that's a great double I, I, feature oh it's it's so one uh, this movie has everything it just it's got laughs it's exciting it's funny it's romantic it's sexy it's just it's so great i love it so much i didn't see it in the theater either i it's another one that I watched on HBO, probably recorded. I know I recorded it. I just can't remember what the other movie is, which is weird because usually those movies are always so tied together. But I just always loved it, loved it. And then rewatching it, I was worried like, oh, maybe it's not going to hold up and I'm going to be so disappointed. I think it's still super fun. I had so mm -hmm. much fun rewatching it. It was like just what I needed. 
yeah. right now. I just love it so much. And uh, if you haven't seen Romancing the Stone, you should pause right now. Go watch Romancing the Stone. It's streaming on Amazon Prime right now. You don't even have to pay to rent it or anything. Because you already have Amazon Prime. Just go watch it. Uh, and it stars Kathleen, Kathleen Turner as Joan Wilder, and she's a romance novelist. And I love, I just love the beginning of the movie, too, where she's typing. We get to see, like, how her romance novels end, which are such <laughs> romance novels. I'm sure you've read a million of these kinds of novels, yes. My mother. Yeah, my mom, too. My, my mom had Harlequin romances mm -hmm. and had them all over the house, like, stacks and stacks yes. of them. Like, she she would pile right through those. Oh, yeah. My mom did, too, and she used to trade them with her friends all the time. Yep. And they would yep. write their names in the cover, like, oh, Kay's already read this one. And now yep. I'm reading it, and I'm going to pass it off to Phyllis or whatever. I'm making up names, by the way. I don't know any of those people. But, yeah, she had tons of – but those are the kinds of – just the beginning is, like, such a romance novel. And he, you know – and then I killed the man who murdered my dad, raped my – sister shot my dog and took my bible <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like such a romance novel thing and she's typing it on her typewriter and it's always nice to see a typewriter and then she decides to celebrate with her cat romeo who's so cute what who's a, cute, a cute little cat what a cute little cat and she gives him like his special food on a plate and she busts out all of her little liquor bottles that she gets off of airplanes i guess <laughs> Why doesn't she have real liquor? I right? mean, is she worried she's just going to drink too much? or I don't know. Or we're just supposed to think she's on the road all the time. We're supposed to think like she's always on a book tour or something. I, I took it as she travels a lot for work, but then they make it sound like she doesn't travel at all. Because she, that she's a recluse. Yeah. It was super, mm -hmm. yeah. That I don't know. It's a, it's a funny little touch, though. And, of course, Kathleen Turner is really beautiful. We all know Kathleen Turner is super beautiful. But they try really hard to make her look all plain. She's in like turtlenecks yeah. and like beige clothes and her hair's up in this bun. And then she finishes her book and she runs out to meet her publisher. And that's once again, National Treasure Holland Taylor. And I would love to go and have drinks with Holland Taylor at this bar. I love it. I just watch her make fun of all the dudes yeah. that are there. She's like too, She's just, <laughs> too desperate. Too happy. Too happy. <laughs> too vague. <laughs> loser. <laughs> Biggest loser. <laughs> I just really love her so much. <laughs> that was all reshoots. It's so it's it's so funny that like I love in the gross guys like winking at them like, and she's like, "How about him?" And she's like, "Ugh, <laughs> so there." But I I really enjoy her in this part. Um, Joan Wilder because they refer to her by her whole name the whole movie. Joan Wilder. Right. Joan Wilder. Joan Wilder's sister, Elaine, is in Cartagena, Colombia. Her husband has been uh, chopped up into little bits. And it's all over a map that leads to a huge emerald called uh, El Corazon, the heart. Mm -hmm. And so she gets kidnapped, literally b kidnapped, by a kid. A kid kidnaps <gasps> okay. her. Okay. <laughs> I forgot all of it. I did it. too. I, I could not remember it. So this kid is using this string and he knocks her out in her car, just pushes her aside and starts driving. And that's where it gets a little goofy because, you, you know, obviously there's a stunt driver, not a child. Yes. Driving. But like the long shots, he's really tall, the short, <laughs> you know, the close ones. These are not, it's hilarious. But it's like Elaine's been through so much. Her husband was murdered. Yes. And they didn't find all of his body. And like, if they ask her about Kathleen Turner, like, how is she doing? Because eh, she's okay. You yeah, know? yeah, she'll, she'll be fine. I'm like, what? It's just her husband was chopped up. It's fine. It's yeah. Fine. Well, she'll, so so she walk gets an envelope that from her brother in law. Yeah. Right? Was, yeah. And, and at, her, at her apartment. And we then see that she's being followed by a man, a mustachioed man. Mm -hmm. He's and so sinister. First, he's very sinister. And we first meet her, like like you were saying, she's got like this flannel dress that she wears to bed with the mm -hmm. socks. I'm sure I wore that in 1984. I'm like, I, um, I wear stuff like that to bed now because I'm sexy. <laughs> I'm so sexy. I know how to, I know how to keep things spicy in my marriage. <laughs> Keeping those home fires burning. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
but she's like dowdy and she's and when she goes out and all the merchants are giving her a hard time giving the hard sell for their and she's like she's she lacks confidence yes and what happens is that the the bad guy he kills her super yeah what the uh, fuck that stabbed the super like i'm like dude didn't really deserve dark. didn't deserve that no he did not just knock him out that's all you had to do but she yeah. comes home and her ho home is ransacked and then she gets a call and it's the kidnapper saying we have your sister come to cartagena and uh give us that letter and you know whatever it, and then we will let her go and they were going to film it in Cartagena, but there were so many kidnappings happening there that so they actually scary. moved it to Mexico, which is a little scary now yeah. for kidnappings. But they, so she goes to Cartagena, and the guy follows her, the menacing guy follows her from New York, from the airport to Cartagena. I guess they get on the same flight and everything. Mm -hmm. And he puts her on a bus that sends her to the opposite direction. And she winds up the the bus crashes into another vehicle yes and all these birds are left and she gets out of there and that's where she meets uh michael douglas and john what's his name jack jack, jack colton jack t course, colton his name <laughs> and michael douglas has never looked better i mean seriously he's so hot in this movie oh my god it's true I'm not I'm not like a fangirl for Michael Douglas it, by any means, but I think he's very, very sexy in this movie. It's pretty ha except when he dances. <laughs> See, I think he's a good dancer. That's hilarious. I do. I'm totally, I mean, I'm used to bad dancing, I guess. I, I totally was <laughs> I was totally charmed by it. I was like, but he's he's an American. She doesn't speak Spanish. And she's in the hill, you know, the hills of, of she's uh, in Argentina. A, yeah, she's in a jungle. And she's wearing like her puffer jacket <laughs> and her blouse with the skirt and the high heels. Like, mm -hmm. did not prepare well. Like, just, nope. They're trying to say, like, fish out of water. She's just like, no, you know. Yes. So he chops off the heels on her shoes. That's so, so can walk in them. So funny. That's, that. yeah. She goes, these were Italian. And he goes, now they're practical. <laughs> yeah. It's like such a, such a line. And they're in the jungle together. And mm -hmm. there, and she promises him three hundred and seventy-five dollars in traveler's checks, if he'll, which <laughs> seemed like not a lot of money to me. I, I, but maybe not that gets all. you farther in eighty-four in Cartagena. But okay, mm -hmm. so he's taking her on, and he's going to help her, and then ultimately help her with her caper. Yes. But so we have Danny DeVito and his cousin Ira, <laughs> and Ira, their, their <laughs> Ira, their task to find her. And she's, because th th ultimately the the stone that they're talking about is uh, an emerald that's worth a lot of money. But they don't know this. They're kind of yes. going about their business. And what gradually happens is that there's sort of they they be, she has more and more fun with it. Like she kind of sees the adventure and she's less timid as she goes along. I do like it when they're in the truck. Yes, and they get stoned, and he just says, "Ah, the Dooley brothers broke oh, up." Oh God, it's so. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> ah, that... shit! Like, and then she's like, "Um, how long have you been down here?" <laughs> 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 There's, they have some real fun in the junk. It really is like such a fun movie. There's, you know, she's of course like dragging her suitcase around. She's got her heels on. He chucks her bag. He chops the heels off her shoes. Then there's like this pretty famous scene with like a mudslide that they go down. And of course, like he lands like right between her legs. It's all very suggestive. And yeah. And for a lot of the movie, they're just being chased through the jungle. You know, she's trying to walk across a shitty rickety bridge. And she ends. I, I do love this part where she ends up like accidentally swinging across. And I love oh, it. Yeah. I love it because of the way she lands. Like in the most like, like, uh, like little kid almost like way. Like she just lands right on her ass, like thump, <laughs> and then she immediately starts digging through her bag and pulls out one of those little liquor bottles. <laughs> and starts, like, <laughs> like I just I don't know why it just makes me laugh. And they yeah they do stumble across a plane wreckage that's filled with pot, and mm -hmm. um, he's and like pickles. and pickles, and he's like, oh, do you smoke it? And she's like, I went to college. <laughs> yeah and they they eat snake and talk and get to know each other a little bit which is nice it's 
they have yeah. such, they have such good chemistry and then we get they the look great together they do and then we get the you know the doobie brothers broke up <laughs> which is <laughs> oh, <man>. devastating to him <laughs> when did that happen <laughs> and he reveals like his dream right his dream is he wants to buy a boat and sail around the world which is so romance novel i just mm-hmm. love i love the little nods to romance novels throughout this throughout this movie so they're being chased by zolo that's the creepy sinister man with his mustache and his like military men i guess and we also mm-hmm. have danny devito running around uh being like chewing on gum and talking shit to ira on the phone damn it ira rah, rah, rah. <laughs> and that's when and then we meet juan and juan, juan is, is the best reveal yeah he is i they i believe he's he, so he's a drug dealer right that's the mm-hmm. thing and he lives in this little town and it the big reveal spoilers for <laughs> romancing the stone uh yeah. is that he's a huge fan of the joan wilder the Joan Wilder. Yes. He's a huge they all are. They all are. Everyone in the town is like, oh, Joan Wilder. <laughs> he like had like a cowboy hat made and all this stuff. And and I, I love how much he loves her and how he wants to show her <laughs> around the town. And so, you know, he takes them into his like monster truck. <laughs> he's like helping them escape. <laughs> and he's like, and he, you know, why did you leave the field that was good cover? And he's like, I want to show you this other field. And, you know, <laughs> and here's the river where my parents met. And he's giving them like this little tour of, cause he wants to show off to her. Cause he likes her. So much. It's like, I know it's so funny to me, like such good little characters along the way. He's hilarious. He's absolutely hilarious. And then they, they get to town and she gets a little bit of a makeover, you know, because she's been in that dress for the last couple of days yeah. and her hair was messy. Yeah. And, of course, she just washes her hair, puts on a new dress, and she's gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous, well, gorgeous, and, gorgeous. And as Kathleen the, Turner. As the movie progresses, like, she's getting sexier. She gets more beautiful. She gets more beautiful. Mm-hmm. So it's like the, the bun is getting looser. The clothes are getting a little bit more torn in just the right spots. Yeah. You know, so they're they're not subtle about like what's happening it's like really really obvious yeah and then and he starts reading her book Mm -hmm. you know they're always passing around these joan wilder books and he starts reading a book and he's like "Ooh, what's this all about Mm -hmm. and they have they go into this town and they're they're dancing and he's in that all white outfit i it's funny because you're like he's do you think he's a bad dancer or you just think it's embarrassing uh, i just think it's like kind of like white older white guy trying to blend in dancing but don't yeah. get me wrong I would still totally dance with him and I'm not a good yeah. dancer so I'm no shame it just made me snicker oh no it did no but and I like that when they were dancing together because she's really awkward at first and he kind of just like you know helps her find the rhythm mm-hmm. and Danny DeVito's trying to get in there you know <laughs> to and it's like that Carmelita whatever her name was yes. she's like drags him out <laughs> she's punching him in the face one hand Oh, it's so funny. And then they have a love scene, which is very romantic. It is. And they're talking about their dreams and what they're going to do. And then he, they get, what happens next? So they. um, So she decides that he is right, that it's not just the map, that mm -hmm. they should find out what's at the end of the map and that they can use that to bargain for her sister. And his his thing all along was, um, well, he's he wants to buy his boat. And Danny DeVito rightfully points it out. Like, I'm honest. I'm stealing the stone. I'm not trying to romance it out from under her. <laughs> like, his right. Michael Douglas original thing was to kind of woo her and, like, get the stone for himself. But he does really start to care about her. And he doesn't want to do that. But it's it did start no. out that way. So it's that, very funny because they're yeah. in a car and it goes over the waterfall <laughs> and they get split up and she starts yelling at him like, you planned this the whole time. He goes, it, we fell over a waterfall. Yeah, like, I love it. She's, we planned this. You did this on purpose. <laughs> yeah, so she's pissed. Like, she is, like, not having it with him. And so, she, yeah, so then, but then they get separated and Joan is just getting smarter and smarter and 
tougher mm -hmm. as she gets, you know, as she goes along. And eventually, so one of them has the map, one of them has the stone, and they set up this point where Joan is going to meet her sister, and she's going to do the exchange, and then she's going to have her sister back. And as soon as she gets her sister, they're shooting all over the place. And Joan immediately is, like, very brave, and yes. she's, like, protecting her sister. And there's kind of this shootout, and then Ira totally screws over Danny DeVito and takes Ira. off on the boat. Ira, we should also mention, is very obsessed with alligators or crocodiles, whatever oh. they are. I don't remember, but I think it's alligators. He's very obsessed. Everything is like, look at those snappers. <laughs> Like, all the time it's it's all like throughout the, every time you see ira he's like obsessing over alligators he's he's throwing the meat he's talking about them look at those snappers just crack <laughs> i don't know something about that character cracks me up and then and yeah, then go ahead michael douglas shows up mm -hmm. and, and there's sort of this yeah no you go no you go <laughs> No, you. <laughs> they they hit him. They hit him in the crotch. They give him a yep. a shot in the balls with a gun, the, the butt of a gun, and it turns out they've they've hit the the emerald. They've hit the family jewels, it, and <laughs> and he kind of you know drops it from his pants and then kicks it, and evil guy catches it and he's like, "Thank you." <laughs> and then the alligator <laughs> eats his hand. It's so gross. <laughs> It's so gross. It's terrifying. And then Michael Douglas is like chasing after the alligator. Yes. Like he's holding on to him for dear life. And then Ira's taking off on the boat. And Danny DeVito's stuck. And then all of a sudden the cops are showing up. And then Danny DeVito's going, they're going away. They're getting away. He's pointing to the boat. He's like, go get them. They're over there. They're over there. And Kathleen Turner runs off with her sister. And they're going to go to the American um, embassy. Yeah. And then the very next scene we, we have it's Holland Taylor's reading this book that she, you know, Joan wrote another book in record time. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it's her best book ever because she's writing about what happened. And I love this part where she says, you know, you're officially a hopeless romantic. Mm -hmm. And she says, hopeful. I'm a hopeful romantic. Yeah, I love that part. Too. I love that. It's really I sweet. Do I do. I, some of the things I love about the final standoff at the end is, I love that Joan saves herself, which yep. I think is, she's, you know, she seems pretty upset about it at the, like, she killed a man, basically, and we're talking about a romance novelist, you know, two days earlier. She's not used to killing a man, but I like that she saves herself. I do, it does bum me out that Jack takes so long to, like, decide that he needs to let the alligator go and save Joan. It's like, she could have been murdered. <laughs> In, that, you, time. in yeah. that time I'm like come on Jack but ultimately like Joan saves herself which I I really liked because as I was rewatching it I was like oh is he gonna save her because then that makes me I don't know that's not the ending I wanted and then I remembered she's gonna save herself and she does so yay and I like she does that. yeah so then and so as she, and she looks beautiful by the way like at the yes. very end of the movie like that outfit she's wearing Oh my God, mm -hmm. she's gorgeous, and she's found and her she's confidence. Walking. Yeah, well, now she walks by those merchants that were giving her hard, those vendors, yeah. you know, that she used to be intimidated by, and she's just like, nope, nope, nope. And then we see this gorgeous boat mm -hmm. in the middle of the street in Manhattan, and she goes, and it's Michael Douglas, and he's wearing alligator boots. <laughs> I like and your boots. <laughs> I like your boots, and she climbs the ladder to get to the the boat with him. And they smooch. I mean, he said that the alligator died in his arms. Mm -hmm. And she would say, well, that's what I want to do, too. Like, they're, it's very, very romantic. It's so romantic. And the boat is named Angelina, which is the name of her main character in all of her romance novels. It's it's so romantic. It's such a fun movie. and It, it just, really, really is. And it fucking moves, too. Like, it's less than yeah. two hours. I think it's. With ninety six minutes or something, it's it's mm -hmm. really tight. Like it's it's so fun. It I just was so happy that we decided to rewatch it. It's romantic. It's funny. It it I, I, supposedly it didn't test very well. Yeah. And Zemeckis lost Cocoon. He was going to direct Cocoon, 
and he had to go back and re- refilm a bunch of things. And so originally her editor or publisher was going to be a man mm-hmm. and he, they wrote, they just had to rewrite a whole bunch of stuff and it's, it totally, totally works. Like you're just totally, if there's not a wasted scene mm-hmm. here, there's nothing, nothing goes on too long or too short. It's just really well done. I mean, Kathleen Turner does everything an actor has to do, you know, she's, I mean, all over yes. the place and she's just always authentic and believable. Yes. Yeah. I think before this, Kathleen Turner was like, oh, body heat. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the Kathleen Turner thing. Like, she was like a femme fatale. She was, this showed that she could do more than that. I mean, she had done mm-hmm. the movie The Man with Two Brains, which I don't know if you've ever seen it. The movie's funny I as shit. I have not seen it in a long uh, time. Okay, I used to watch it a lot because it's another one that used to be on HBO a lot. I think that movie's really funny, and she's really funny in it. She plays, like, the bad guy, the the evil wife to um, Steve Martin. She's really funny in it. But I think this just showed she was more than, like, sexy. Yeah. She, she's re- I mean, she's a really good actress, and she's really great in this role. And you believe where Joan is and where she ends up. It makes sense. She's so good. Yeah. They And they both are. And there's a reason why they did. I mean, Jewel of the Nile is not a good movie. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> But, you know, and then they did War of the Roses. They have really good chemistry. Yeah. They just really, really click. Did did I saw Jewel of the Nile in the theater. I couldn't wait to see it when it came out. And then I was I'm and I'm pretty sure I liked it at the time because I was just so happy to see them. But you watch it now and you're like, oh, "Mm." (laughs) it's it's missing all the energy that it had. It's missing. It's just it's not. No. It it's wasn't not as fun. As good. No. Yeah, and it doesn't have the romance factor. I mean, it does have the amazing song by Billy Ocean. <laughs> Do you remember that <laughs> when song? When the going gets tough. Yes. I used to love, get going. I used to <laughs> love that song and it had the <laughs> shittiest 80s video of like him like singing and like the backup singers quote unquote were um Kathleen Turner and Danny DeVito and Michael Douglas. It's like they're not uh, really the backup singers it's just like some 80s it's just ridiculous but i used to it's love stupid. that song no. i used to, i like get out of my dreams oh, yeah. it's my car <laughs> that song is so get weird get out of my get out of my get out like it just builds <laughs> oh i loved it i get fucking loved dreams. it get, get it to my car, my car. <laughs> that's my another one up. with a crazy video yeah it's well, so silly so, ocean. Yeah. Yeah. My friend uh, Ron worked on Kathleen Turner's book. Mm-hmm. And it was like 10 or 15 years ago. And he said she was really intimidating. Like mm-hmm. she just mm-hmm. has a look about her. But he said um, uh, she she's a, a con- was a constant smoker. And he took her to Barnes and Noble. She had a book signing. And they're in the back office. And she's in the bathroom. And she lit up a cigarette. <laughs> and he says... There's no smoking here. You can't smoke here. And she goes, oh, but I am. <laughs> and he was like, okay. <laughs> That's how she keeps her voice that way, probably, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's, yeah. I wanted to mention, so, yeah, the movie didn't test well, but it was a really big hit. And that's Mm -hmm. what helped Robert Zemeckis get back to the future, which, of course, is like a perfect movie. Yeah, I agree. Romancing the Stone actually won the Golden Globe for Best Musical or Comedy. And it won Kathleen Turner, a Best Actress, for Musical or Comedy, of course. And there was something else. Oh, it was nominated for an Academy Award for Film Editing. But I think they should have been nominated for more things because it's it's so good. It's the kind of movie I'd love to see in a movie theater yeah. right now. I wish they would make something like this. There apparently there was um, talk of a remake. Did you did you read about that? No. Okay, this is you're gonna fucking laugh your ass off. It's so terrible. So in 2007, they were talking about doing a remake with Gerald Butler or Gerard uh, Gerard Butler and Catherine uh, Heigl. Oh no no no! They're poison. Right. I wrote 
LOL, they are such nothing burgers. Like, they have, like, nothing about them that would work in this movie. There's nothing about them. No. 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 Oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> That's a terrible. I could think of some much better people for this kind of movie. Like, I'm like, what about, like, a like a Tessa Thompson? Like, she would be awesome. Brie yeah. Larson would be awesome. Brie Larson could do it. Yeah. You know, for, for dudes. Oh, my God. What if it was Chris Evans? He's... He's funny. Yeah. He could do comedy. Yeah. He could do action. What if it He's was kind of perfect Ca actually? Captain America and Captain Marvel in a romantic in a romancing the stone remake. I totally watch the shit out of that. I'd be into it. Yeah. I'm into it. Yep. I'm All into right. It. Okay. Get on it, Hollywood. I fixed that for you. <laughs> so other people We need a romantic comedy. We need one so bad. Come on. So apparently Sylvester Stallone was maybe uh going to take this movie and decided to do rhinestone instead wow <laughs> we we could do rhinestone on the show sometime because it i have a feeling well, it's a dolly it's i love her yeah i don't understand how that is a movie that happened i think it is probably a really fascinating mess my by the way my mom loves rhinestone loves it she loves it she thinks it's great when i make if you make a joke about rhinestone she'll be like i don't understand it's such a good movie <laughs> my mom had shitty taste in movies too <laughs> the worst maybe we all do maybe we all yeah, have shitty taste right. you know but like rhinestone is <laughs> yes let's let's have sylvester stallone sing country what could go wrong <laughs> uh, other people for jack t colton uh clint eastwood I'm like he's too he would have been too old even then. Yeah. Jack Nicholson. I'm like, no. no. Christopher Reeve. Yes. Yeah. I could go I, for I that. I can see that. Yeah. And apparently Paul Newman was offered the part too. But turned it he down. He would have been too old. He would have been too old. I love Paul Newman, but I think he would have been too old. And then for Kathleen Turner, um, Deborah Winger was apparently offered the role at one point. She's just not fun. She's not fun. You know, that's a really good way to put it. I, I like her a lot, mm -hmm. but she's she's not light. I mean, no. she's very serious and very heavy. Yeah, and if like you, everything she does. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, go back and watch Legal Eagles. <laughs> oh, that's another one. Love Touch. Rod Stewart. Remember I still that video? Love that song too. <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> Rod made some of the worst songs in the 80s. He and I totally loved them all. <laughs> did. Before I'm, he went to the oldies route, to the, the standards. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to watch the music video for Love Touch. And when the going gets tough, the tough gets going right after we're done recording with this. I think I'm going to do the same. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jessica Lang apparently was also offered the part. And I was like, once again, like, I don't know, is Jessica Lang funny? You know, everybody says she is in Tootsie. I don't think she's funny in Tootsie. I think she's very real in Tootsie. Yeah. Um, but no, she's another one. Like she's very serious to me. Yeah. I I and I like Jessica Lang. It's just I, I do don't too. I don't think she's I'm right. not shitting on her. Yeah. I just don't She was great as Joan Crawford. Yeah. Kathleen Turner is like mwah, like she's just perfect for this movie. Yeah. But get on that Chris Evans Brie Larson one. I totally watch that. <laughs> Do you want to hear about some other movies from March 1984? Yes, I do. Okay. Speaking of songs that are cheesy, Against All Odds. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that song, too. It's because it's ridiculous. It's so over the top. Um, it's got Jeff Bridges in it, so the movie can't be 100% garbage. But it's got James Woods, so. Yeah. Take what, you know. I don't think I'm going to go back and watch it is what I'm saying. Uh, Repo Man. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. Yeah. This is Spinal Tap. Uh, I, My friend's dad took us to see that. <gasps> he worked in the record industry. And he was howling the whole time. We thought it was just funny, like the cucumber dick, you know, in the pants <laughs> and the stuff like that. We were young and we just didn't have any, like, other perspective. But mm -hmm. I always think, like, I saw that in a movie theater. 
and with my friend's dad, who's an industry person who got every fucking joke. Yeah. I was howling. It was just, it's one of my favorites. It's so good. Children of the Corn. Good movie. The- Not. <laughs> <laughs> it's garbage, but it's fun garbage. Yeah. The Hotel New Hampshire. Okay, that movie and book are fucked up. Okay, I saw it on cable. And I just, I don't remember everything about the movie. I just remember it took some really weird turns. And I was like, what the fuck is this movie? It's John Irving being cute. Mm -hmm. And I don't like him cute. I like, I mean, he's cute. But I like, I don't like his work when he's trying to, I feel it's too hard. It's trying too hard to be quirky. Mm Mm-hmm and unconventional and it takes away the humanity like i think other, his other books are way way better than that one okay but there's a lot of people having sex in it so i can understand why people would want to do the movie <laughs> it's sexy yeah but it yeah but there's a whole thing where a person i'm just a spoiler i have a yeah, trigger warning it. but there's a woman that's um raped yes okay that's hers yeah okay and that happens out of nowhere and then a guy just says just so you know, there's a you inside of you. You're okay. And I'm like, why is a man explaining to her mm-hmm. what she's going through? You know, it's mansplaining like at the worst. But it was uh. just like a weird, yeah, it was just a weird turn. And it's like people use rape sometimes just to do stuff like yeah. that. And ugh. What a great way to push anyway. the story forward. It's like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think I watched it because it had Rob Lowe in it, right? And it does that as most beautiful yeah that i'm sure that's why i watched it by the way because i'm sure there was nothing yeah. about the story that i was like oh i gotta see that i would have been 13 so uh splash came out march 1984 i, I love splash splash is so good i love it's splash. wonderful uh the movie tank came out in 1984 which do you remember that one with james garner oh god no i don't i was thinking of turk 182 remember that movie oh who is that timothy yeah uh, timothy uh tim timothy hutton hutton thank you yeah no tank is stupid movie (laughs) tank is pretty dumb too but i have a soft spot for james garner it's like his son is accused of a crime he didn't commit or something like that and then they go on the run in a tank i think (laughs) But I do love James Garner. I do, but yeah, I don't think it's a good movie. You can watch Rocker Files. Yeah. I, mean, it's, it's, yeah. I would much rather do that. Uh, also, Police Academy came out in March 1984. I liked those movies. I'll be honest with you. They made me giggle. Um, the first Police Academy made me laugh out loud. when I Because once again, we're talking about 13-year-old Sonia. I thought that was some funny, funny shit with like. Yeah. Dude, a guy gets his head stuck in a horse's ass. That's all you need to know about Police Academy. <laughs> Such a weird movie. So 80s. And then the last one is Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. That's a uh, Poe Derrick. Is it? I don't rem- I don't even remember. I just didn't. Yeah, that's. That's one yeah. that I don't think I even saw. I'm like, nah. Uh, so do you want to hear about some of the top songs of 84? Yes, I do. Okay. We haven't covered uh, 84 in a while. Um. New edition, cool it now. I loved Such new edition. Song. Loved, oh, they were so good. Loved new edition. Thompson Twins, hold me now. I love Thompson Twins. They were so good. That was such a great song. They you, were. You still can't get away from that song. You listen to a song, a station that plays '80s music. That song will come oh, on yeah. within an hour. Uh, Sheila E. The glamorous. Okay, Life. that song is fucking rad. That That's song is really rad. So good. Holds I saw. Up. I they, saw her, okay. um, where did I see her? I saw her in concert, but she was just playing the drums. Like she wasn't, she. They didn't have her sing? No. She was playing the drums for someone else. She was amazing. It was for Prince, duh. Hello. She was playing. <laughs> I'm like, where did I see? She was amazing. That's all. Yeah. She, um, Van Halen, 1984, uh, <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Such a good song. Long jump. It's early, a great song. Early 80s Van Halen, like Panama. Really? Panama. Oh. I was I love Here was a song. Loved it. Here's a song you could not get away from then. Uh John Waite, Missing You. 
<laughs> that was a good oh one too. Oh my god, it's a good song, but you could not get mm-hmm. away from it. It was everywhere. The music video, and then, too. Oh. Yeah. And then my favorite from '84, Prince, "When Doves Cry." Yeah, come on, That's, come uh, on, so good. My friend, my friend Phil, we sat next to each other, and um, in like ninth grade through twelfth grade. And he would go into the city and to Greenwich Village and he would go into the record stores and he would spend the whole day on the weekends just listening to records. So he always knew what was cool and what was coming out. And I remember he in class one day, he was telling me about this song from Prince and he just described the song and like, it's, it's got a guitar and then this happens and then this happens. I remember being so excited, like, fuck, I need to listen to the song right mm-hmm. now, but I'm in school. I got to wait till I get home. But I'll never, ever forget that because it's like one of my favorite songs still. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, and you yeah. couldn't get away from the Purple Rain soundtrack oh, in 1984 and 1985. Like, it was yep. just it's so good. That's a good list. Yeah. What else are you dorking out about? Well, I just started dorking out. Uh, it's a Netflix uh, special, and it's Martin Scorsese. And he's talking with Fran Lebowitz, and she's this uh, writer and a raconteur. She's a famous New Yorker. She's super acerbic and funny and witty. And he has a series. It's called Pretend It's a City. Oh, and, okay. And it's on Netflix. There's like, it, it, it sounds like a big endeavor. It's like six or seven episodes. But he just talks to her and just gets her opinions about what it's like to live in New York and you know, she said she talks about how like she doesn't have a phone, she doesn't have an iPod, she never brings anything to read. Like, like whenever she's walking around, she's hmm. completely unencumbered, and she's paying attention. She goes all day long. People almost run me over. They almost knock me over. Like they don't see me. And she a, a tourist stop. Like you know all that all that shit. And she just like people just pretend it's a city. Move that way. <laughs> like nobody. Everyone just goes their own way in New York. And she's right. It's like. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's I I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm just I just watched the first episode and I I I just like her wit and charm. Is it just her for like every episode he's interviewing her? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, so, I'm going to put am it I on gonna my watch list. all of them? I don't know, but I I I'm 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 highly intrigued by it already. All right. It's going on the list. That's interesting. Yeah. Pretend it's a city. Uh did you Pretend start it's a city. Did you start the history of swear words yet yeah i didn't like it oh really i just watched yeah, the first I know, I'm one sorry yeah i i got it, it it brought me back to that old like the soup or uh totally the, I love the 80s. I like was... all the talking heads like and i haven't seen that in a while so i just found it a little jarring it, maybe yeah. i need to watch it again it reminded me of those um vh1 like i love the 90s oh like, yeah yeah and i it was only 20 minutes but i found myself wishing it was more of the nicholas cage stuff and more of the experts yes and less of comedians just saying dirty words i'm like that got tiresome for yeah. me I'm like, just, or just one of the comedians, or maybe two, but not like 10. We don't, (laughs) that's all. Because I like the the history of it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. And I, I love Nicolas Cage. I mean, and I like, I appreciate he's sort of embracing his wacky persona. I think that's awesome. But like when it was like the fifth or sixth comedian, I'm like, all right, best week ever. This was already a thing. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't need it again. Like I would just, I would, I would just keep the experts. Yeah. I'm going to keep, and we're I'm, I'm going to keep watching just cause they're super short, but I just feel like it could have been way better. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you could cut out the comedians and watch it in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. They're just padding. So uh, last night I rented um, the reason I jump, which is a documentary uh, based on the book by, Nee- I'm going to make sure I got it correct. Okay. Uh, Naoki Higashita. And okay. he was 13 years old, um, nonverbal, autistic. And aided by his mother, he wrote a book, and it's called The Reason I Jump. And he's just kind of explaining 
like how he sees the world, um, how he thinks the world sees him. Um, and the book was translated from Japanese to English in 2013. And it's, it's, it's really, it's a really great book, but the documentary is more like it uses the book as a jumping off point. Uh, see mm-hmm. what I did there? Reason why I jumped, jumping <laughs> off point. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Um, we're So it there's some voiceover where it describes like what it's like to be autistic, like how they see the world, how they are attracted to certain details of an object instead of seeing like the whole picture. And it profiles like five autistic people from all over the world. So there's some people, like two people in Virginia, one in Sierra, Sierra Leone, one in, um, shit, I can't remember all the places. I'm so sorry. I should have wrote down all the countries. Anyway, England. There's one in England. Um, and it's just, it's really beautiful to look at and really interesting and gives some ins. It's really more about the feeling than mm-hmm. Sometimes when you watch a documentary and you're like, well, I could have just read the magazine article on this and I would be fine. Like, it's very visual and how it's telling the story. It's it's really, really good. Um, and I rented it through an app on your TV called, like, Kino Now, which helps you kind of support your local theaters. Have you heard of this? No. I looked no, all of this up. I was like, I don't know, because I wanted to watch it. I knew it was out. And I was like, how do I stream this? So I did some Googling. And it was called Kino Now. And you type in, like, you could do it on your phone. And you um, uh, type in, like, your zip code. And it's like, hey, your local theater. Like, for me, it was this theater called the Balboa Theater. Would be showing the reason I jump. And you can, like, rent it through the app. And then you can download the app on your Roku and watch the movie. So now we've rented it. We can watch it like all we want for like five days or something like that. And then it's going to like disappear. But it I, apparently this is a great way to support your local theaters. So Oh, I love it. So I love it. I'm going to try to do that more often. I know the Alamo Draft House is doing things like that too, which mm-hmm. I – you know, have been ordering like merch and stuff from them, but I feel like if that's a way to help them stay in business too, I should do more stuff like that. But the reason I jump is on there. I'm sure it's going to move to like a regular streaming service, quote unquote regular <laughs> streaming mm-hmm. service at some point. But that's where I watched it, and it's it's really really well done. It's so interesting, and it'll make you want to read the book. I think too. So. Oh, cool. I have to check that out. Yeah. So where can people find you on the internet, Margo? You could find me on social media at Brooklyn Fit Chick, mostly for Twitter and Instagram. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you're interested in hearing our voices on other podcasts, we also do What a Creep, where we talk about creeps and then we end the episode with someone who's not a creep. And we're having such a good time over there. So fun. Oh my God. So when, much fun. When we're not being like man hating liberal <laughs> snowflakes. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, even though like like so many of our episodes about are about women, we're still man haters. You man hater, <laughs> Margro. You gah. Anyway, we are having so much fun over there. And there's a uh, What a Creep podcast group. It's like a private group on Facebook if you want to join. A lot of Dorking Out listeners are on there, too. So you, you are most certainly welcome to be there. And you can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram, where I post photos of my dogs and beer. And you can find you could email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail.com, and we can send you some stickers. I'm going to print some new stickers with our new logo. In fact, <gasps> sweet. I'm going to write it down right now. Stickers. So I'll do it today. We're going to have stickers with the new logo. Um, And please, like, if you like us, follow, you know, follow us on all the things. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts to only if you like us, though. If you're going to if if you're going to give us one star and complain that I say fuck too much. That's cool. You keep that shit to yourself. Oh, my God. But this was super fun. I am so glad we talked about Romancing the Stone. We need more romantic comedies right now. So this was a great choice. 
Yeah, it just it just hit the sweet spot for me. I just needed something 1984, you know, another time, another era with like beautiful movie stars doing action and making out. It's all I needed. That's all we need. All right, let's everybody please be safe. The numbers here in America are going up. So wash your hands, wear your masks, practice social distancing. Be nice to each other. Everyone be nice. <laughs> be kind. And look at those snappers. <laughs>